my name is Beth Hinton Lever and I'm an actor and today we're going to be talking about demystifying the monologue. So how to take apart a monologue and look at different approaches to the text. Um, I am an actor but I came to it a very unique strange way um, from archaeology. <laughs> so I understand that there's not only one way into the industry and there's not just one way to look at monologues and songs. This is just some of my tips and tricks and hopefully some of them might stick for you and might help you. Um, I think if we go back to the text and we root ourselves within that it can give us a more assured, nuanced and deep performance and connection to the text ourselves which is always helpful. Um, it also allows us to make stronger choices and as well as that I think once we've really rooted ourselves in the text all of that anxiety that we get from performing whether it's on zoom, in front of your mirror, in an audition it helps settle me if I really do these few stages and settle myself with them. It helps me with any fears I have. Um, first of all, I am sat in front of a beige background, but with one picture, well, a painting of some sunflowers. I have brown mid-length hair. I have a swooping side fringe still <laughs> from when I was 15. It's still here. I have piercings in my right ear. I've got some black nail varnish on and some rings. And I was born without my lower right forearm. Um, so the first thing I want us to do is a exercise that I call three things and I think it helps settle you in the space it means that you've said something out loud wherever you are um so it's not the first thing you're saying is your performance uh it reminds you of who you are as an individual because there's only one of us and we are the only people in the entire world who will make the same decisions and the same choices as us and one thing that I want you to realise from your monologue is that it's to showcase you, the choices you make, um, you as an individual, because that's what people are looking for from monologues. They want to meet you. Um, so another thing to say when we're running through these exercises, pause the video whenever you need to. And then there's less time pressure because I'm going to rattle on through and you can take as much time as you need. So three things. I want you to say one thing out loud that you are scared of, one thing that you love and one thing that you're proud of. So come to whatever you're comfortable with, your working level, and then say out loud. I'll go first. So I think one thing I'm scared of is that this tutorial will make no sense and that once I finished it, I would check my phone to send it and it would have deleted <laughs> because I'm a technophobe. Uh, one thing I love is this mug. I think it's a wonderful mug. It's a massive mug and it's very nice to hold. And one thing I'm proud of is I recently redid my room. So I tidied it all and now it feels far less cluttered and far more me. So have a go, say it out loud. And so scared, love, proud. <laughs> one thing I will say is that I use a pen and paper to write down everything, which is what you will see me looking at. Um, I think it really helps me to not only remember things, um, but also if I am going into a stress inducing situation, so for me an audition, and I'm looking down at a piece of paper and it's printed, it scares me and it, my brain can't really handle, I think, that amount of information. Whereas if I write down my lines, whether it's a monologue or a scene, whatever you've been asked to prepare, it really helps me to look down and see my own handwriting. Um, I'm not really sure why, but try that if you're ever worried about remembering your lines because it really helps me. Um, so once we've done the first exercise, let's move on to number one, which is where. So we're gonna talk about five different ways of tackling these texts today. And they are where, what, how, who, and why. <laughs> Try to get them in the right order. So where, what, how, who, and why. So let's start with number one, where. So it seems obvious, but where are they? Um, are they in a place where they feel comfortable? So you're going to act differently whether you are at home 
or whether you're in a courtroom. So make it a conscious decision because once you've made that decision it will automatically alter how you stand how you breathe whether you're leaning whether you're comfortable in the space whether you're sat into one hip folding your arms all of these choices will come naturally once you've decided or once you've looked at the text and found where they are it also stops me from fidgeting, which is a big thing for me. I am constantly wringing my hands together. And if I know that the character is at home in their bedroom, they're comfortable. So they wouldn't be doing that. And it really helps me to stop putting little bits of Beth into the character that aren't necessary and distract. Um, another question for where, do they know the place? Is it new? Have they seen this room before. If they haven't, it will help you with your eye line because you will automatically be looking up, looking around at the room instead of probably at your own feet, which is what I do when I get nervous. It also gives you the chance to move. So if I'm sat down, am I comfortable? Is the chair actually comfortable? A big thing with wear is don't fight against the environment you're in. If you can, if you're talking about longing for the sea air and there's a window in the room you're doing you're performing this piece in you can utilize that and not only will it root you in that room it will keep you present and I think that really helps me so that I'm not regurgitating the same speech that I've practiced I'm keeping it alive and in the moment um so once we've kind of decided where they are how they feel about where they are you can really utilize that and own it in a way so you can settle in the room a lot of what I'm going to talk about is managing to make this monologue your own and also settle you in a room because it can be so scary I know I still get terrified about performing uh, especially at auditions when you feel pressure that you put on yourself and I think a lot of this is helping to make sure that we know what we're doing and we know that whatever we're doing is wonderful, it's us, and it's the best we can do. So number two is what? What's just happened in the show or the piece or the play? It should go without saying, but please do know where your piece comes from. And if you can, read the entire piece. It will help you so much with understanding the character. And not only that, but what is happening and how they should feel in this moment. Um, so most importantly with what, what has happened immediately before we see them and do they know what's next? It will give us a more rounded characterization. I think if we think about what in terms of an actual example, if we think about uh, Antigone, so when Antigone first speaks to Ismene, her sister, she knows that she is about to go and bury her brother, which is against every rule in ancient Greece. So her last word, the way she leaves the stage, the way she lets words hang at the end will be completely different as opposed to if we're looking at so much better from Legally Blonde, the way that Elle is so excited, so raring to go, willing and pushing to get to the next stage, to get to the courtroom. They're completely different energies because of where they're about to go. So it's just, it helps me massively to know what I'm getting towards, where I'm going. And if I'm not sure, what do they want out of this? That's another massive question for what. What do they want out of this and what do they expect to happen? Two massive questions. And I think if we sit down and we try and work out what they want and whether it's realistic, it will completely change the way that we're talking either to ourselves or to whoever it is we might be speaking to. I will just say again, so at the end of each of these sections, pause the video and have a go yourself with either your song or your text, whatever you're working on. Um, I think it helps me to break them down into different sections so that it's not an overwhelming amount of information to try and get through and try and piece together. So that was what. Now, how? Um, how do they choose to express themselves? Do they ask questions or are they direct? Do they change tactics? Are they manipulative? Um, all of these questions are so important. So 
how they express themselves. Me, personally, my pace is fast and fricative and I'm quite, my eye line will jump and as you can tell, I gesticulate a lot. <laughs> so, do I want to use that in my character? Does that suit my character? Or do they have a slower pace? Are they more, let's say, professional? <laughs> do they have a slower pace of thinking, of breathing? Do they choose to keep their hands by their sides or do they gesticulate a lot? A lot of these questions will, if we make a decision, not necessarily a correct decision, there is no correct decision, just make a decision. It will help us to flesh out this character. And also it helps me personally channel a different energy. So for example, if I'm going to an audition and me myself, I know that I, as I've said, am quite punchy and quite energetic sometimes i will choose to make the decision that my monologue or my song will be the opposite to that so that i show the panel a range not only of who i am but of what i can do and what i can bring to the table so i think that's quite a helpful little way of thinking about it or sometimes if i just really am very nervous i will keep a lot of myself and my own energy in the character so that when things happen, when I do wring my hands, like I said, when I am fast and energetic, it will happen anyway because I'm being me, more me anyway. Um, so another one for how. Do they try and evoke a reaction through how they speak or relate to the other person? So are they needling them? Are they trying to get a response from them? And if they are, how are they doing that? What tactics are they employing? Um, as I say, what's their tempo? You can either use yours, you can swap it, whatever's helpful for you in this moment with this song or this monologue. Um, another thing with how, I remember when I was at drama school, I was doing a piece by Sarah Kane, who is an incredible playwright, um, but quite out there. And I had this line and I had no idea how to say it, what it meant, why the character was saying it, what they wanted, and I really couldn't get around it. So don't worry if you've got one of those in there, it does happen to all of us. And one of my tutors said to me, well, that's amazing, because if you make a decision on what that line means to the character, you open up this whole door of how this character works. It doesn't have to make sense to you, because you're not the character. You have to make sense of it for yourself. So don't get scared if there are things like that in your monologue or your song, because as long as you make a decision and make that decision your own and own it, it will make sense because you've made it make sense. So it's just a little anecdote, but I really hope it helps if you do have one of those tricky lines or tricky lyrics that you can't wrap your head around. Make a decision and then it will all make sense because you've made it make sense. Um, so I hope that helps. So that's how. Moving on to who. So what type of person are they? Who are they? It seems obvious, but it's one of those things that if I don't sit down and work it out, I will be not as fully rounded and not as fully fleshed out as I could be because the decisions I'm making are... Um, guesswork really which is all it is but if I've sat down and I've written it out and I've spent time with it I don't feel like I'm guessing I feel like I know them so again it will settle me um we can use everything we've already worked out and used to make these decisions so where are they do they own the room they're in do they shrivel in the room they're in how do they feel about that what we can use what we know has already happened to them and how they're reacting to this, whether they're completely in control of their situation and what's happening to them or whether it's spiralling out of control for them and what point in that spiral they're at. Um, how they express themselves and how they feel, move and speak, their choice of words, all of these things are so important with who they are. So their choice of words might be measured or maybe they are running out of ideas and really clutching at straws. All of these things will really help us with our performance. So we can find the truth in who they are and then relay that back to us and dial it up. So, for example, what I mean by that is we 
should really, for me, root ourselves in truth whenever we are acting. That way we're not only getting a more nuanced performance, but it's a performance that is you. And that's something no one else can do. And that's such a beautiful gift to give to other people, I think. So for me, finding the truth in one of the harder characters I've played, I was very lucky and I was performing Long John Silver in Treasure Island. Long John Silver is a pirate and a villain. <laughs> and these are things that I haven't lived through, I'm not aware of, but I found the truth in what Long John Silver was saying for me. So for me, it was the way that Long John Silver's disability was related to other people um, and how other people treated Long John Silver because they are disabled. So I found that in myself. I found remembering and feeling those either feelings of frustration or annoyance or beauty in some ways of being a disabled actor. And I used those emotions and dialed them up in Long John Silver. So I really had a hook into this character. And once I'd made that decision and I'd found the truth within that part of Long John Silver, it made it so much easier for me to find the other parts of Long John Silver because I had such a strong connection to this character personally. So that really helped me with who. So... If you can find something like that in them, it doesn't have to be something as strong as a physical attribute that you share with them. It can be one word they say that you think, oh, I like that word, I'm going to use it. Or maybe they swear a lot, or maybe they have a mutual interest. If there's really nothing, you can choose, you can fabricate something. And as long as it feels correct to you, it's going to work. Trust me. I think the more that we can root these characters and these choices and this performance in us and ourselves, the better we end up being able to perform it because it feels correct to us. So the second part of who is who are they speaking to? If they're speaking to anyone, is it a soliloquy? Are they working this out for themselves? Are they just sounding these words out? Are they just speaking their feelings to the sky? Or are they speaking to someone? Who is that? This will change how we move, how we breathe, how we speak. And without having to labour over it, it will settle us and help us to make these choices. If we're talking to a police person, if we're being interviewed, we're going to react completely differently than if we're talking to a best friend. If I'm trying to figure something out myself, I'm going to talk differently than I would to my mother. So all of these things can help us move along this monologue and also keep creating idiosyncrasies for ourselves and within our performance. Um, another amazing thing that we can do with Who is what clues does the text give us about who they are and who they're talking to and where they are? So Katie Mitchell has this amazing exercise called Facts and Questions, where you will sit down and you'll write out from the text any clues we get with facts. So if we know their name, their age, where they live, what their job is and questions. So things like, uh, I guess, a question would be, are they enjoying where they live or do they have a name? Do they like where they live? Have they moved a lot? Have they ever been on holiday? Things like that. And there's this amazing quote from Katie Mitchell that I'll read. And it's building an imaginary world for the actors to inhabit using ingredients from real life and circumstances suggested by the text itself. And that's pretty much what I try and do with my monologues. I try and flesh them out as much as I can from using the text and my own experience, my own life, so that I'm not just speaking words that feel disconnected to me. I'm creating a world in which I can live in this character and comfortably talk as them. And the more that I am fleshing out this world, the less I think about the stress of speaking these words correctly, getting all of these beautiful things I've worked out in it. The more that I flesh out this world, the more that I can truly live through these words and through this character. Um, so that helps me. Uh, and if it helps you, wonderful. Um, so that's who. Our final little way of looking at this monologue is 
why? It feels like the most obvious question in the world, but it is worth saying and it is worth sitting down and thinking about, for me anyway. So, why now? What's changed? Why are they speaking? Why are they singing? And you'll have this question said to you, and I think, why are you speaking? Why are you singing? That question confuses me a little bit because there's too much to answer. So the way that I break that down is why now and what's changed? What has happened to this character in this moment that's led them to speak? What hasn't been said before? Is it that they've chosen this place, they've chosen these words, they've chosen this person perfectly and they know exactly what they're about to say? Or is it that something has snapped, something's changed and all of this just pours out of them uncontrollably? And I think knowing that will alter everything we do in this monologue or this song. Whether it's a measured response, whether it's a I just need to get this out of me or is it more manipulative? Is it, I don't want to carry this alone. So I want you to share this burden with me. And there's so many different ways of playing this and it doesn't have to be the way that it initially feels like it should be to you. If you want to change it up, we can change why. So we can change how they're saying this just to play around with it and then we find a version that fits for you and feels right for this and this character and it's not always going to be the same and that's really important to say it's never going to be the same performance twice and we know that in live theatre we love that about live theatre it's one of the reasons I love theatre and I will remain in it hopefully for as long as I can because nothing is ever the same you take what is given to you and you respond to the energies with you and we can do that ourselves to practice or we can do that in a room or we can do that to change a monologue or a song that we love but we want to see if it works a different way so it's also really important for me and hopefully for you to know why this piece and why you in this piece is a question that I think is forgotten quite a lot and it's so important if a director or anyone asks you why have you chosen this it's such an incredible opportunity to explain a bit more about who you are as a person and what you're about what you love what you're passionate about what you're scared of and there's so many beautiful ways we can convey that through the piece we pick so it's so important for me to sit down and know why you and why this and it can be as simple as I love it I just love this piece I love this character or sometimes it's harder than that sometimes it's I found this piece and it helped me get through something or get over a hurdle and now I love revisiting it to remind myself how far I've come it can be anything but I think it's so important to know why you and why this piece so we have been through five different ways of dissecting up a monologue and they were where, what, how, who and why. And I think I try and do all of them, but sometimes maybe one or two of them will really help you and the others feel laborious or tiresome. So try it, try all of them for the first time and then you will find your own groove and your own way of working with these texts and maybe none of it helps, but... It's a good exercise to try and I understand that there's so many different ways of working and there's so many different ways of working out how these things work for you. This is just the ways that I try and use myself. Um, I think it will give us a deeper resonance with your text and your character. And not only that, it connects us to who we are individually and what we alone can bring to these characters and bring to these monologues or songs. Um, so congratulations, we've got through it. <laughs> so shake off, come back to your working level, however that is. <sighs> Big breath. And we're going to go back to the first exercise. We're going to revisit that, but it's got a slight difference this time. So we're going to do three things again, but at least this time 
words <laughs> is going to be something you're proud of, something you love and something you're excited for. Again, I think it's just really important to root ourselves back into who we are as people, what we love, what we enjoy doing and why we are actors, why we love doing what we do. So for me, what am I proud of? I am in this moment very proud of the fact that this is the Leicester curve and I'm incredibly fortunate and very proud to have worked with them and also be able to hopefully impart a little bit of knowledge for you guys. Uh, one thing I love, um, I'm in London at the moment and it's been raining all day, but I have been in my very cosy room. And as I said, I've just redone it and it feels lovely and it's got lots and lots of fairy lights. <laughs> so I love being in my room right now, hearing the rain outside. That's been a lovely way to spend the day. Um, something I'm excited for hugging people <laughs> without a doubt I cannot wait to hug people if you've ever met me or you've seen me on stage or met me at stage door I love hugs I will hug everyone and I can't wait until I can hug people again and hug my friends um and obviously goes without saying very excited for theatre to return <laughs> um, so uh thank you for spending this half an hour with me I really hope it helps and um, it helps to connect you to your pieces and also remind you why you do this and why we love what we do. Um, I'm sure you will do incredibly well and break a leg. All my love and I'll speak to you soon. Bye!